In the news this week, a former spy chief warns that street preachers could be caught by controversial extremism proposals, a consultation on the Scottish Government's named person scheme exposes widespread opposition, and an MP who is running for leadership of the Labour Party calls for more compulsory sex education. Hello and welcome to this week's News Bulletin from the Christian Institute. Evangelical street preachers could be subjected to crackdowns from an anti-extremist law, a former spy boss has warned. Sir Jonathan Evans, who ran MI5 between 2007 and 2013, said definitions would be crucial in the upcoming extremism bill. The Christian Institute and others have repeatedly warned that the bill could contain measures with the potential to seriously damage free speech. Sir Jonathan made the comment in an article for the Daily Telegraph. One can imagine already the powers being used against harmless evangelical street preachers or the like out of misplaced zeal and a desire to demonstrate that they are not directed against one religion alone. A Labour MP has also spoken out against the proposals. In a debate on BBC Radio 4, Yasmin Qureshi said that they could be used to silence people's views on homosexuality. What I'm saying is, for example, when the gay marriage debate was going on, I had so many Christian people writing to me saying that, you know, homosexuality is co incompatible with their faith. What I'm trying to say is, you know, people should be able to say something like that and then you can discuss with them because only by discussing, right, you'll be able to challenge their narrative. Responses to a consultation on draft guidance for the Scottish Government's named person scheme has revealed serious and widespread concerns from charities, health boards, councils and individuals. Police Scotland added its voice to substantial opposition, warning that it could make it harder to identify at-risk children. Simon Calvert, a spokesman for campaign group No to Named Person, said that the Scottish Government needs to take the named person plans back to the drawing board. Well, this intervention from Police Scotland is extraordinary because they're saying what we've been saying all along, which is that rather than helping vulnerable children, the named person scheme is going to harm them because it's going to mask them in the system. The files of kids that really need help are going to be buried on social services desks under the files of all kinds of families where there's just no problems. The consultation showed that the government has a problem. Organisations are hardly convinced by the scheme and parents and individuals are overwhelmingly opposed to it. They've got a real problem. You know, when the Scottish Government got it wrong on corroboration, they went back to the drawing board. They need to go back to the drawing board with the named person. An editorial in the Herald newspaper, a consistent supporter of the plans, identified a morass of human rights concerns. Above all, the change in the threshold for intervention from the more appropriate risk of serious harm to the vague concern over welfare should be reconsidered. The Christian Institute, alongside other groups and concerned parents, is pursuing a judicial review against the plans. A candidate for the Labour Party leadership has called for compulsory sex education to be imposed on schools. Shadow Home Secretary Yvette Cooper also said that she would champion much stronger action to promote LGBT equality. She also called for a review of the Gender Recognition Act, which deals with transsexualism, and said that the government should consider so-called gender-neutral passports. The Christian Institute has repeatedly warned that rather than solving problems, making sex education compulsory for young children will only cause more harm. Spokesman for the Institute, Kieran Kelly, said, Over the last 30 years, people have been pressing for more sex education at a younger age and of a more explicit nature, and this has only damaged society. The sexualization of young people is a concern that everybody holds, especially these days with the prevalence of social media. But a vet Cooper's solution is completely wrong. And finally, a former prostitute who suffered horrific abuse for 25 years has talked of her successful work to help women escape the sex industry. Brenda Myers Powell, now 58, started working on the streets of Chicago when she was just 14 years old. Brenda spoke about her terrible experiences on the BBC World Services Outlook program. I can tell you that when people describe prostitution as being something like the story of pretty woman or anything like that it's nothing close to it there's so much violence okay i've been shot five times i've been stabbed over 13 times uh the guys that come to pick up prostitutes are not doing it to make them their girlfriends trust that her life was turned around after a desperate prayer to god brenda has now been married for 10 years and has started a foundation for young girls who are being sexually exploited or who are at risk of exploitation so far, it has helped 13 girls to finish high school and attend colleges. 
She says her purpose is to tell young girls that there is life after so much damage and trauma. Well, that's all for this week. For regular updates and information on all of our stories, plus much more, visit our website at christian.org.uk. Until next time, goodbye.